Hey guys, what is going on? Dylan here, and I got kind of a long one for you today. We're going to be soloing the Pit of Heresy, which is a challenge in itself. Uh, for the loadout, we're going to be using Ignition Code, Cartesian Coordinate, Galahorn. Make sure that you have some kind of um, Protective Light mod on, and uh, of course, going to be running Devour on the Warlock. So I'm going to say off the bat, right up front, this is not an easy dungeon. There is one encounter in particular that is a pain in the ass and it will take you quite a few tries on your first time attempting this. Or at least it did for me. Um, also, trying something a little bit different with this video, I'm actually playing Destiny on the PC this time, and so I kinda wanna see how y'all like that if it's better than playing on the Xbox. Um, so, just speed, throwing, speed running through the um, first portion of this. I'm gonna kinda do a walkthrough of this dungeon as well, going counter by encounter, explaining the mechanics, explaining how I did and why I did what I did. Uh, just in case anybody needs additional help with that. Uh, Gallahorn, because it has those two rockets in one chamber, very, very important for a lot of this. Um, so, okay, for the first encounter, there's all these symbols around this room, as you can see. But first, most importantly, you want to go down to what I call TP, or you can I call it house. Um, either one of those. Uh, that one there. So that is how you're, where you're going to start the encounter most important thing you want to do is you want to kill this pit keeper at each one of these symbols there will be a keep pit keeper that unlocks this centralized room you also want to have a sword which you get from these accursed sword bearers um, so I kill it here and in this first room here it's going to show you those three symbols those are the three separate rooms that you have to go to to kill three separate bosses so the first one I go to I call sentry because uh, it looks like a sentry turret from Halo um, so kill the pit keeper try to clear out the area. I think these guys despawn. They don't always do that. And so for the Shrieker, for the first room with the Shrieker, there's two Ogres that spawn, so I'm trying to get the Ogres to come out so I can kill those first and then focus on the Shrieker. Um, they each have their own mechanics. So the Shrieker, you actually have to block the bullets back into it and kill it that way. And this is important because this does come up later in the boss fight, the final encounter. Uh, that one is called Sandwich. That one is called Hamburger. That one is called Woohoo, because it looks like a guy going Woohoo. And that one's the Vex symbol. Um, so this is the wizard room. Uh, there's two wizards in this room. And then for this one, you actually have to um, heavy attack, which will actually throw uh, beams of light at it. Um, if you want to conserve on ammo, you can always uh, just use the super. And then if you run on ammo, you just got to kind of roam around and try to find another of these, cor these uh, cursed sword bearer guys. Um, so the second one was the nut, or the wizard that you use that um, your heavy attack, and then for the knight you'll use the light attack. So it's block, heavy, and light attack, which does come up in the final encounter. Um, all three of these. So after defeating the knight, a beam of light will shoot from one of the little pylons there, uh, which is where you have to make your way to to continue on to the next encounter. Now, don't just beeline it for that, because there's a ton of enemies that spawn. Look at all those acolytes down there. It's incredible. Um, so try to clear those out. I actually did rush it a little bit here. So I pushed up, and there's an ogre there. I'm freaking out because I'm going to die. Uh, so kill the pit keeper, and then hurry up and just haul ass into the room, just as long as you kill the pit keeper. Um, I almost screwed that up because I, I rushed it a little much. So that is the first encounter done. Um, so continuing along, don't go to one of the doors because they'll you'll get it wrong and it'll kill you. Go down to the right here to this hallway and continue on to the ogres. Now, the ogres, I'm not going to cut away for this. Follow my pathing exactly and it is the quickest way to complete it. I think I, I, this was like a perfect run for it, so I think I get it done in like three minutes or something like that. It was a really quick encounter. So the first one you want to go to is there. And so you just do that. So the first two encounter, the first two encounters are really easy. So once you go into these rooms, you want to kill the uh, this knight here, um, and it'll drop an orb, which again is showing you a another encounter. It's actually showing you the encounter that you'll have next because it's something very similar. Um, that's that's the cool thing about these dungeons; is they show you kind of what to expect from the rest of the dungeon. It kind of reuses mechanics. Um, so doing a little hop and mailing will kind of speed you up, which is pretty cool. And then continue around. I like to do this so I can kind of sneak here, get an angle on that. The ogre is leaving. Good timing. So now just run here and go into this middle one. And if the ogre is there waiting for you, you can just wait and normally he'll kind of he'll go back to wherever he was a second ago. So kill the knight in this room. Come back out. And then you're going through here. And then immediately to your left will be the next one. And then the first little one on your left here. Right there. 
um, will be where the next knight is. And you just kill, kill, kill. There's the knight. Get his orb and continue along. So first two encounters, really easy. And then right here to your left, there'll be the last thing. And that's the, that's the ogre encounter. And so the first two encounters are pretty easy. Now, <laughs> make sure they despawn, by the way, too. Now, I'm going to say, this encounter is... Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. So, make sure you go in with a full thing of ammo. Uh, for this, I'm using the Fatebringer, um, the Galahorn, and Cartesian Fatebringer for that explosive payload and then Firefly. Um, so I use a Galahorn to quickly clear all those enemies out, don't want to deal with them. So you have to stand on this plate. If you don't stand on this plate, you will wipe because of that curse of suffering. So, what you want to do is you don't have to immediately rush, you do have a little bit of time, but you want to A, clear out enemies, and this is where Devour is going to come in so clutch. So, that knight spawns on the left, so you simply just go over to him, you kill him, he drops an orb. He takes that orb, and you run it all the way back over here, and you dunk it. And then you hurry up and get back on the plate. So that orb kind of resets that curse of suffering. Now every time that you dunk a ball, those knights are going to spawn up top like that. Two knights, either side. So prioritize those. Make sure you get rid of them. Um, secondly, always have Devour going because Thrall are going to overwhelm the crap out of you. So that's where I try to use... Um, that's why I try to use the Fatebringer to take them out in explosions, Curse Thrall show up, it just becomes a nightmare. So just keep that Devour proc'd, keep trying to run back and forth, side to side. It is honestly a chaotic encounter, but with the Valor, running Galahorn, because I like Galahorn because you can shoot a rocket left and then right and then reload it, um, but keeping, um, see, so I have Galahorn ready, so it's boom, and then boom, and then instantly, so here I almost screwed up because I didn't have my grenade to um, put Devour on. Luckily, a melee, I was able to get a melee off, and so yeah, so I'm just trying to get a headshot, and there you go, to explode him, so that makes it a little bit easier. Um, Wither Horde would be nice, but again, I prioritize having the Galahorn just for those um, knights up top. So there are multiple times here where I almost die, so it is very, very difficult encounter. But you just keep bouncing back and forth, and then um, I just I don't go for the knight in the middle ever. I just go left and then right and then left and then right and going back and forth. But you have to dunk the ball six times. Uh, once you do that, um, the encounter is completed. So it will definitely take you a few tries, and I think... I don't believe I cut away. I think I'd keep this entire encounter in here just to show you how ca crazy it is and chaotic. But actually, if you notice, I, I have like no more Cartesian and, and no more uh, Galahorn. So I actually am like, okay, I just have to just go. You know what I mean? Luckily I get some Cartesian drops, but for Galahorn, I'm, I'm screwed. So I can't take out those knights. So I just, I'm like, you know what? Let me just keep trying to proc my Devour and keep going. Which I actually, you know, I mean, I complete the encounter, I get lucky. But it's 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 brutal it's definitely brutal so again every time you get your grenade in I would have a high um, discipline to get your grenade back but, so I don't I actually don't even use it on the night here I just try to clear enemies in front of me because I can dodge those uh, night missiles or whatever you want to call them but they're just raining fire just look at the chaos <laughs> it's just insane if you're accurate with like a sleeper or a sniper and you don't need that splash damage, more power to you. I am not, however, so I have to compensate with using something OP like a Galahorn. Um, but it's just a chaotic room. And so I think I have one more after this, and I'm just getting bombarded right now, just trying to stay alive. Devour is still up, which is very important. Actually, the Thrall come in very in handy here, because they're a one-shot melee. Um, if you have something like Karnsteins as well, those would help, or Necrotic Grips, those are great too. Um, just popping that super every chance you get. I almost died there, but luckily I used my grenade. And then, so this is the last ball, so running it over. I actually screwed up because I tried to hop and then I meleeed. Almost killed me. And look at that health! Oh my god! Holy crap! And, oh, did the encounter. Yeah, I'm shaking my head because I'm like, holy crap! <laughs> it's insane! Luckily, that's the hardest uh, encounter in, in, in this... Um, in this dungeon. That is the most difficult. So here I switch to a bow because for this next encounter I want to keep distance. You have to find three wizards in this little maze of a room. I believe there is a map online. If I end up finding one I'll pop it on the screen somewhere. Um, but I didn't have a map at the time so honestly I just aimlessly wandered. Oh by the way this jumping part. Um, yeah so you just keep going ledge to ledge. Don't try to jump all the way down. Just go ledge to ledge. Take it slow. Um, Cause you know obviously if you're going flawless so just take it one ledge at a time, take it slow, it's all good. 
And um, so yeah, so this one I just, you kind of wander, what I did is I just wandered around being extremely careful, very careful. There's something about those symbols. I think there's like, there's these different symbols that pop up in different areas and that shows you where they spawn. But honestly, I just take it one jump at a time, very slow. There's like obstacles all over the place and just go ledge to ledge. And then when you see enemies on your radar, try to make your way over to those enemies. And your goal here is you're trying to kill three wizards. Once you kill all three wizards, you'll open up the way, which I think I show right here. Yeah, to, to the left there, that's the door you're trying to open. So just, um, yeah, slowly make your way. I'm being very cautious, just jumping from ledge to ledge. And then when I get up here, I believe there's a wizard and some enemies. Yep, so what I do is I prioritize the acolytes. And then I just kind of stay in cover. And you can one-shot just about anything here. Um, if you wanted to use like something like Vex, I guess that would work at a distance because the the the, w the wizard does have um, solar shields. So, but I just take it very slow, and then making sure that everybody's dead. And there you go. And I kill the wizard. Oh, in a minute I'll kill the wizard. Okay, there we go. And so then here's the second one, which Galahorn, Galahorn works great, by the way. You just gotta be careful because it is a rocket launcher. You don't want to blow yourself up. So that's one. And then the final wizard there. So now the way is opened, and we are ready for the final encounter. So, again, final encounter is actually not that bad. Just take it slow and be careful. And then there's a few mechanics that really will get you. So, moving along, um, you want to kill sword bearers. There are these guys to the left here. I just make quick work of this one and get the relic. And then in e and then just like in the first encounter, in three separate areas, there's going to be a knight, a shrieker, and a wizard. And it's the same exact mechanic. Uh, knight, you do light attacks. Uh, shrieker, you do block. And then for the wizard, you do heavy attacks. Now, with the heavy attacks, you'll notice that I'm kind of jumping. And it's because it does a quicker heavy attack. Now, if, and again, if you knock this knight off, I actually knock, knock the knight off here, they just respawn. You don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, so I show the entirety of the first encounter, or the first um, phase of this fight, just to show the entirety of the mechanics. So they'll drop a void ball. It's literally just a mixture of everything you've done. And then I always move counterclockwise because there's tons of enemies that wait for you at the bottom of the stairs. Now, I've noticed that like when you dunk the ball, like they all run up on you. So you can actually do, right here I'm still doing Devour, but you could also do Stasis. And you'll see here, I dunk it, and then I turn and I try to freeze. And then what I should have done, which I didn't have my grenade at the time, but what you do is then you throw a stasis turret down, and that'll just start slowing everybody down around you, and it'll allow you to kind of make more of an escape, freeze everybody up. So that, that is another option. I, however, prefer devour. Um, so yeah, getting more. The shrieker is in the middle, the wizard is on the right, and the knight is on the left, if you're facing the encounter from where you previously came from. Oh, and prioritize these acolytes. I, it's, there's no reason why you shouldn't just wipe out the acolytes. Don't rush it, take your time, don't expect to do them, the, like, kill the enemy or the, the boss in one phase. I three phased them, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not a super difficult encounter. You just have to be very careful, and like I said, whenever you get an orbit drop, just go clockwise, because, or counterclockwise. To the next plant because they're going to be waiting for you. Um, so I think here I actually went to the wrong. Yeah, I went to the wrong thing. I went to where the knight is. Realize that. But whoopsies. Uh, so yeah. So you can make mistakes too here. Um, the uh, the only issue that I have or the only part where I think death could really happen is a if you're not careful and b um, during the damage phase. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. I'll actually speed it up to the or. Er, when I get to the damage phase, I'll explain it. So here's the wizard. Always use that super on him. Or that, yeah, your, your super. And just prioritize staying alive using the back of the building. Don't go in the front because you'll actually get shot by like the other people that are down there. And the boss, he throws grenades at you constantly. So I'm hopping and throwing. And it's okay. So here we go. Got the last void charge. So what we're going to do is just hop over here. And then we're going to plant this and we're going to immediately get ready for damage phase. And alright. So proc my devour and super and so now just damaging right being very careful just keep jumping keep dodging because yeah, he does a few different grenade attacks I almost died there because um, he got me with one of his attacks he is very very strong so he can he can, I don't know if he can one shot you but I know he can definitely ruin it and curse thrall will spawn around you as well so um, I do almost get him I think to like half health and so that mechanic that's a white mechanic um, you want to get outside of that center circle before that explosion goes off because that will kill you and you do have to damage him inside that center circle 
So here is the final damage phase. Um, so dunk the ball again. You're just rinsing and repeating. And then, yeah, so get inside the center circle so that you can do damage to him. And super, and I think I hit him with a Galahorn, and that kills him. And boop, and there we go. Dead of Heresy, flawless runs. Flawless solo runs. So that is the Pit of Heresy. It's not an easy dungeon, really, unless you get... If you can somehow get past that Chamber of Suffering in one shot, this shouldn't be an issue to solo flawless. It's just that one encounter that really, really is tough. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty easy dungeon. So let me know what y'all think about the video. Let me know if y'all want me to do any other dungeons. I do, I do plan on doing all four of them that are currently out in some sort of time frame. Um, also, let me know any ideas that you guys have for videos or some things that you'd like to see. I'm trying to also get a good balance between releasing videos and live streaming, so I think that's it. So, okay, guys. Well, hopefully this helped some of you all out. Hopefully you guys can run this solo flawless, and all right. I'll see you all later. Bye.